life with Kimmy. So today I'm going to take you with me as I do a day in the life video of being an apostille um, agent. Um, I got a phone call and the client um, needs me actually to pick up the document. So I'm going to be serving several roles today. I'm going to be courier, apostille agent, facilitator, slash the notary. So the client is sending a document over to India. Um, the client lives about an hour away from me each way. So I charge a courier fee. I didn't think they were going to want to pay the courier fee. But again, people do pay for convenience. So I'm the courier today. Let me see if I close this. Will that help with some of that? Yeah. So I'm going to be the courier. Again, I'm going to go pick up the document. I'm actually going to certify the copy of the document and then I'm actually going to take it to the office here in Atlanta to actually receive the apostille and then I'm going to send it back to the client via FedEx so he's got to pay for that too so this particular job today guys is going to be over $300 for one job and when you hear me talk about and other people that are doing apostilles that they can make $300 um, $400, $500, you really can. So, again, this particular client is having a document that needs to be apostille over in India for to go to India. Better way to say that. So, um, I'll just take you along with me. Um, for those of you that are not doing apostille service, you definitely want to add this to your list of services. For those that do not know what an apostille is, it's simply an authentication is needed on a document before it can leave the United States to go to another country. Now, not all countries are a part of what's called the Hague, which is um, which makes it a simpler process for the document to leave. Some countries are what's considered non-Hague. Excuse me, and non-Hague countries have a little more complicated process. Not much, but it still is a little different. So there's more than one way to process an apostille. Um, you do want to be an expert at that. You don't have to be a notary to be an apostille agent, but it's recommended because like I told you today, I'm serving more than one role. I'm also going to notarize the documents. I'm going to certify copy the documents. So um, I'm actually headed to Chick-fil-A right now to get me something to eat. I really want me a cup of coffee. I really do. So I'm flying solo. So I'm gonna have me a cup of coffee and have me probably the minis at Chick-fil-A. I love the little minis. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Chick-fil-A in your area, but those little mini things are so good. And I'm hoping I could beat it there. I just left the dentist. Um, not my favorite thing. And then I found out I have to get a crown. And I have to get a filling, which I wasn't surprised because I've been having a little issue on my bottom right and then my upper left. So, oh my bad. Actually, they both on the bottom right. Let me get my rights and left together. It is both of them on my bottom right. So, it's the bottom left and then the bottom right. So, so I got to get some crown work done. And again, a feeling. So I'm not excited about that, but again, I do want to be able to eat and talk. So um, without problems. So anyway, guys, again, think about adding our postal service. I'm gonna take you along with me. Um, give me a minute. My husband's calling, so I'm gonna have to come back. I'll give you a minute. I'll be back. All right. So Jeffrey just wanted to let me know that um, the area that I'm heading in has a is a backup. I always forget about Dunkin' Donuts. I don't know if they sell 24-hour breakfast or not. But anyway, I'm trying to beat it to Chick-fil-A before 10.30. It's in the morning. So, whenever I have to drive now to Atlanta, though, to take the um, documents for our pasta, I try to go in the morning because you do not want to be stuck in Atlanta traffic in the afternoon. So, I try to go in the morning. So, a few tips I'm going to give you throughout the day. So whenever you're um, talking to your client about how long the job is going to take, um, delivery time, I always try to give myself a couple of days. So that sounds like, Mr. Smith, how soon do you need the document back? Oh, okay, I need it tomorrow. Well, then that don't give me much room to play around, right? But if you say, always oh, a couple weeks or whatever, then I always try to do things that are convenient for me. What does that mean? I'm not going to break my neck and run down there the same day just because he gave it to me. 
I'm gonna look at my calendar and see what's best for me. When is the best time to travel with the traffic? Do I already have to go there, go down there for something else? Am I already out and about? Do I have another job scheduled? You know what I'm saying? I try to make it convenient for me. So if he says he needs the same day, that's a little different story, right? But um, if he has a little flexibility in there, that allows me a little flexibility in there. So I even try to just let them know, hey, so um, it might be a couple of days. Because I just never know what's going to happen, too. I might get downtown and they say, we can't do it. Or whatever, you know. So, um, always leave a little leeway there. Keep your client in the loop. I told my um, customer I am going to let him know once everything is completed. Because um, he does owe me another $50 for the FedEx package, the shipping. Um, <clears throat> so, he does need to pay me that. I mean, he's already paid me over $300. So, am I worried he's not going to pay me the other $50? No, I'm not. But I will talk to him prior to shipping and um, get my money because at that point if I pay for his shipping and he does not pay then that's costing me money so you know I'm not having that right so yeah so I'm trying to get the Chick-fil-A what you up to today whenever you're watching this video do you do up hostels let me know is that something that you've added to your business plan or not I'm just curious um, because it's still a growing field out here with up hostels a lot of people don't want to take the time to even learn it it's not it's not the hardest thing in the world again and it's not the simplest you know what i probably could have got breakfast at mcdonald's but i really think i'm going to chick-fil-a because i keep talking about it and i might have missed mcdonald's i think chick-fil-a have a little courtesy window so i'm gonna let y'all know um so yeah are you doing apostilles in your business i'm just curious um it took me like for real four to five months to add it when i first learned about it i was like i don't feel like trying to learn all them documents and how to do this and how to do that because it's like i said it's some processes right and i started thinking about the money and i started hearing about the money people would say you can make 185 dollars for one sheet i said who gonna pay me 185 dollars to do one document of any kind let me tell y'all, they do pay you. The money is real. So in this case, I'm doing two documents. Um, I did charge him 185. That was just being generous. Because usually, and it depends on where you're located too. Everything is relative when you start talking about money. So what I can charge here in Atlanta, in my particular area, because I'm not even in the city. I'm on the outskirts. Um, let me not miss Chick-fil-A. I don't know if I can turn here and get to it or not. I hope I can yeah so whenever you're talking about pricing guys it's all relative because what i can charge in my in my little suburb of atlanta somebody else in atlanta can charge probably even more you know so i hate these chick-fil-a's the drive-ins are always crazy if he can if he tell me i can't have breakfast i'm about to be really upset let me see they usually go a little bit later than everybody else Y'all hang out with me and see. So I'll just keep talking while I wait. See, can I get this um, coffee and this sandwich that I want? These little uh, minis. The chicken minis are like a little piece of chicken nugget inside of like a little roll. It's like a little sweet bread. So I love them. Yeah, so um, again, it took me four months to start doing apostilles. I was like, I ain't getting ready to do all that. And I was like, I got to go downtown. So then when I said downtown, I started looking into it. And in my case, it's not really downtown, downtown. It is part of the city. Um, but it's not in the heart of downtown. Some people have to go in the heart of the city. So um, so it wasn't that bad the first time I did. It takes me like 30 minutes to get there, 30 to get back. So when you hear us talking about making all this money, though, again, back to that three, four, five hundred dollars, it can add up because you got to factor in. Sometimes you're the courier, you charge for your notary fee, and then you just charge for the actual processing. So again, people say, well, why would somebody pay you all that money to do a apostille? Well, they're going to pay me because they don't want to be bothered with it. I When I first started doing them, guys, I felt kind of guilty. I'm like, this person can go down there and pay three dollars and get an apostille, right? And I'm going to charge them $185. I'm going to charge them whatever. And I would feel kind of guilty. And I would tell people, I said, well, you know you can do it yourself. Again, we talked about this on the Monday night thing the other night. Sometimes I talk a client out of 
getting a service with me because I, you know, feel like, oh man, I hate to charge that. But then I realized they don't want to do it. And they'll tell you flat out, I don't feel like being bothered with that. I don't even want to know how to do it. I'll pay you. You're the expert. So that's why you do want to know your business, right? You do want to be the expert. I love when people say, oh, you're the expert. Because I have invested in my business. Either you're going to invest money to learn what you need to learn. Or you're going to invest um, time. Time. That's why people always say time equals money. You know, because it does. Either you're going to, time is valuable. So like even my YouTube book. I put everything I look it took me eight months to learn YouTube how to do it effectively to grow my channel right it took me eight months I put everything in the book so you can read the book and in an hour not even you know everything there is to know just the main main things about YouTube same thing with Apostille it took me months and months to learn how to do the basic so at Know to Be Educators, we kind of teach us like a three-step process with apostilles. So I'm not even going to get into that. I have about six videos about apostilles. I think this one will make seven, I think. So check them all out. And you may be able to take notes from all of them. I've had many people say, Kimmy, I watched your videos and now I know how to do apostilles. Okay, because I give you everything I can. Um, so that may be for you. Take time and check it out and see... Um, you know, if that's something that you can do, um, add apostilles. And again, you can either self-teach. And again, it took me months and months, but Angela does have a course. Um, and she teaches you in a few hours what it took me months and months to learn. So again, time equals money. Money equals time, whatever you want to say. So you need to figure out how are you going to get this knowledge that you need? How? Is it going to be your time? Are you going to sit at the computer and research and research and research eight months and all that? And there's nothing wrong with that because I did that in every part of my business. I learned YouTube. I learned apostilles. I self-taught myself fingerprinting. I have a course on that. I-9, I self-taught myself on that. So I'm big on self-teaching. I have no qualms about it. I will look it up and Google it and YouTube it to death. <laughs> and then there are times when I have to go ahead and pay. So I'm not above, you'll see me in people's classes, other notaries. I'm taking um, translation, something with um, notary for me um, coming up soon. How to do some basic translation on stuff. So I want to get into that. I did a video on translation services. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of that. I'm not above hopping in somebody's class. I've taken a couple I post, uh, no, I took one apostille class with somebody else. And, um, yeah, so I'm not above paying for a class myself. And sometimes it's funny because they're like, they're like, Kimberly, you they like, Kimmy, you in my class? Yeah, because I want to know ABC. <laughs> so it's so funny um, when somebody see me sign up for a class. And sometimes I have my way of teaching it. I have my way that I've learned it. But you can always learn from somebody else. So that's another reason why I don't mind, um, you know, paying for classes if I have to. You'll see me on different notary channels, and um, and that's part of being a good notary, good a business owner too. You got to be humble. You got to be humble. What does that mean? People don't use that word a lot today, but realizing that you know you don't know everything. You know, you do not know everything. You can always learn from everybody. I learned from my um, notary intake calls with you all. You know, when you guys tell me stuff, I'm like, oh, cool. So I'm at Chick-fil-A. I told you I was trying to get this. Please, I'm praying they're going to let me get breakfast. I'm stalling because I'm seeing what he's telling this other client. I mean, this other customer. Let me see what he says. Oh, Lord. It may not be good. Hey, I was trying to get breakfast. Yeah, we have no breakfast left over. Oh, uh, don't too, even say it. Nothing? Not, nothing. I just called oh, this radio. Oh, my God. Well, I thought they usually wait until 1045. No, it's 1030. And once it hits 1030, they shut it off. They there are Because we have people who are ordering lunch, they shut it off and do it. I'm sorry if you've been waiting for that. Um, is there anything I can get you for lunch? It's a little bit larger uh, thing. No. Okay. They don't have nothing. I just called it in because sometimes we ask if they have a little extra and they don't have anything. 
and I can't even get out. Oh, yeah, fool. you're almost out. You're, you're about three cars from being. Oh, out. okay. Thank so, you. I'm so sorry. Have a blessed day. Okay. okay. So, guys, I'm not a happy camper. I am not. I think that last one was my mobile order. I am not a happy camper. So now I don't know what I'm about to eat. Because I really wanted a coffee. And I don't really care for... I, I don't really care for anything else. Alright, I'll be back, guys. I'll tell y'all what I ate later. Ah! I'm mad. I'm so upset. Alright, bye, y'all. Alright, guys. I'm still on the hunt for breakfast. Y'all yeah, saw what happened at Chick-fil-A. So now I'm headed to Dunkin' Donuts. I said maybe I can get something there. I hope I can. Still looking for my coffee and whatever. So when I talk about offering courier service as part of your apostille and notary business, sometimes also guys, when you are doing like loan modification packages, sellers packages, buyers packages, anything like that, the client will pay you to take the package to FedEx or UPS for them. So that's something else you can add to your business. I might do a whole video on that. I don't know if it's necessary or not. Um, but you can add courier services. You know, like I said, a lot of our job is spent in the vehicle, in the car. We did a whole thing the other day about do you need a mobile, I mean, do you need a brick and mortar office? So if you didn't watch that on the Monday Night Mentor, check it out. Um, so we all kind of the consensus that for us, we don't need a brick and mortar, but for some notaries, you may need one. And if you can, I think it's a great idea if you think you need that for your business, whatever you need for your business plan. Dang it, I missed that light. So I don't need um, a brick and mortar for my business plan. I don't, because I like to be able to kind of just be out on the go I don't want to go back to a nine to nine to five office setting for myself. I don't mind working in offices, but I don't want to be sitting there all day long. I don't. I don't. If I want to go out and get me a coffee, whatever I want to do. Angela's talking about taking naps the other day. So this is going to be a long video, guys, because it's a day in the life. And again, I'm just showing you what I do out here. Um, today, I'm acting as an apostille agent. And, um, like I said, sometimes, I mean, you got to take the package. Go pick up the package. Take the package back. So, it's a little bit involved. That's why we charge all that money. That's why we charge it. Oh, here go Dunkin' Donuts. Let me see. Can I get me a coffee? Hold on. Yeah. About to mix my turn. Hold on. I hope I can get Make a U-turn, then turn right onto US 78 West. That's the GPS. See, can I get something here? Let me see. Um, let me see, can I get some kind of breakfast here? Thank you for choosing Dunkin'. What can I get started for you today? Uh, yes ma'am. Can I still get a breakfast sandwich? What kind of sandwich? Um, let's do the sausage, egg, and cheese croissant. Nothing. We could have hash browns? No ma'am, no. But I would like, um, a medium coffee please. Hot or white? Hot, please. I'll Fringe. take the, um... Do you have like flavored coffee, like uh, mocha, or anything like that? We can make it mocha vanilla. Okay. Vanilla. Can I get a mocha coffee? Can it be decaf? Or no? Um, you want a decaf? Yeah, mocha decaf. Okay. Do you have almond milk, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. So I'll take a mocha decaf almond milk with um like four sugars. How many sugars? Four. Okay. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm kind of picky about my coffee, huh? <laughs> well, regular milk and I don't agree sometimes. So I had to get almond milk. Then I wanted flavor. So I spent about $10 over here at Dunkin' Donuts. It probably would have been the same at Chick-fil-A. And I didn't even get the hash brown. Well, guys, I'm going to come back after I eat my breakfast. And I'll be in touch. Okay, bye. So, I have made it down to the clerk's office where I have to bring the apostille. And the parking today is crazy. 
because it's the day after the holiday so i gotta walk a little ways so that's what another reason why guys when you charge for apostille money don't feel guilty when you're charging your client do not feel guilty it's a lot involved especially if you have to drive it to the facility like i'm doing today um yeah don't feel bad whatever your price is that's your price even when it comes to your regular notary work you know sometimes you're like oh man i hate to charge them or whatever but it's a service and people pay for service um the sun kind of in my eye so yeah even today i'm down here this is taking a minute because now the parking crazy i had to park really far away that's an airplane <laughs> So, yeah, let me get this out. So, I'm going to run in here, and when I come back, um, hopefully with my document apostilled, I'm going to show you the finished product. I'm going to go ahead and call the client and request my additional $50 fee. Um, the additional $50 fee for the shipping. So, I have the FedEx right here ready to go. Already printed my label, and he just needs to pay me for it. Let me go get the document um, completed first. I'll come back and give you some final tips on processing apostilles and what a day in the life of an agent looks like. Bye. Okay, guys. So, I got the apostille. Yes! Um, just a couple more tips. I'm going to wrap this up for today. So, while I was in there, the gentleman had eight documents, another client, customer, going in there to get something apostille. Guess what? era the notary stamped it but did not sign it so that particular document could not be apostille that's why you have to always double check your work you have to know what is required again he got all the way down here document was stamped but was not signed if you saw my video recently i did about a notary that signed in the wrong place <laughs> she signed in the place for her and the place of the other person so that also was not usable. So you have to double check your work. You have to. Couple more tips for apostille. Um, make sure you have the correct amount for your county, whatever the fee is, because if it's not, most counties do not refund you. My county will actually refund the difference because I actually overpaid before. But if you don't have the correct amount of the money order or you overpay, sometimes they won't get your money back. And you may not get your um, job completed. So you want to make sure you have the right amount. Make sure you have the right country, destination that the package is going to. Again, always double check that notary work. Because um, if the notary work is not correct, your document will be rejected. And you do not want your apostille rejected. People spend hundreds of dollars. All day I've been talking about hundreds of dollars. And then come back and tell the client oops sorry it's gonna be another three or four day delay because someone made a mistake right not cool so you want to make sure you check on that make sure your, the notary work is correct you have the correct money your documents are all in line um what else i guess that's it i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up because i got to get ready to take this to fedex now That'll be the last stop in this apostille process. I'm taking it to FedEx. It's ready for the client. I just called and they're going to sell me my $50 for the FedEx. And that's it, people. Another day in the life of a notary. Apostille agent out here. I am Kimmy. Um, again, add this to your business if you don't know how. Check out my other five or six videos about apostilles first. Then over at NotaryEducatorsLLC.com, it will be our pleasure to help you with your training, okay? Again, this is Notary Life with Kimmy, out. Okay, guys, so I'm back. I know I said I wouldn't be, but now I have arrived at FedEx. And I'm at a different location. So I always know where more than one location is. I'm not at the one near my house. I'm at the one near Atlanta where I had to come and get the document apostille and it's a very crazy location so there is nowhere for me to park i don't even know how to get in here i must have passed it so can you see fedex yeah you can see it so anyway now i'm on the main street walking over here to the office because i didn't want to try to come back out you know just one of those areas where 
everything is tricky the parking and everything so i decided to get out and walk it i can always use a walk so anyway i said since i had to come back i'll give y'all a couple more tips so when you get your document apostille the government um office you take it to is going to i made it to the office fedex the um the whatever um agency is whatever agency is putting the apostille together they like the in my case they put it together in the right hand the upper left hand corner make sure you tell your client do not pull it apart because that will invalidate it it will be rejected it won't be good for them to use outside the country so when i text my client about the 50 dollars for fedex i didn't get a chance to talk to him i talked to the wife so i'm going to call him and just reiterate don't pull it apart because it will be invalid one and two as i was driving over here i said i'm going to add a cover sheet in the future when I have a completed an apostille to make it look more professional and a cover sheet might say something like thank you for choosing I'm better notary to assist with your apostille services we are here for any future needs so today I'm doing it kind of the unprofessional way I'm just putting it back in there with a card because <laughs> I wasn't ready so be ready so you don't have to get ready all right so I think that's going to be it so I'm actually walking in here now to leave the package. I hope this goes okay. I ain't for a whole lot of rigmarole. Okay, bye-bye. You, You're welcome. Have a good day. Yeah, All right. So always help the elderly when you can because we might be there one day. So that's what I was doing with that lady. Okay, I will be in touch. Bye. I know I said I wouldn't be back, but I'm back one more time. <laughs> so my client had actually, I was gonna pay for two day shipping. It's either way he had to pay for it, right? But I assumed he didn't want to pay more. So he actually wanted to pay for next day. And come to find out it cost the same thing. That was kind of odd. But anyway, always ask your client, how do they want it back? If you have to mail it back to them. Would you like to pay for one day shipping, two day shipping, and let them make that decision? Because in this case, remember, he's an hour away from me. So we both decided he wasn't going to pay me to bring it back. So um, I'll just ship it FedEx. But ask your client, what is it that they prefer? What's their preference? All right. We'll try not to get hit by a car out here on this busy street. Oh, just dropped my keys. So I am officially done with this apostille. So as you can see, nose is itching. It takes a few minutes, hours to do this. So when you request three, four hundred dollars, the value is there. The value is there. All right. Well, until next time, guys. This is Kimmy. Peace out.